Hey guys, it's Quiggy Baby, and welcome to another review of the VK302DB this time. This is a tier 7 German medium tank, and there's a lot of interest in this at the moment because it is one of the fastest ways, if you already have the tank, to be able to get to the Indenpanzer, the Leopard prototype, and the Leopard 1. So I thought it was quite apt to do a review for you guys, and I'll be showing you some of the gameplay that I've had in my grind towards the Indenpanzer. What do you need to know about this tank? Let's look at its stats first off. We can see that it's got a, a standard amount of hit points, 1,250. It's a fairly heavy medium tank at 40 tons, and it's got an excellent engine, 720 brake horsepower, which gives it more than enough torque to be able to um, keep at that top speed of 56 kilometers an hour along the flat. Its traverse is pretty good at 42 degrees, and its frontal armor, as you can see, is very angled. Look at look at the angles of this armor. It really is quite troll against lower tier tanks. 80 millimeters on the front and 45 on the side. So angling like this can give you an excellent opportunity to completely troll tier six and lower tanks, and even get miracle bounces against some tier seven heavies and above. And tier seven mediums again, you can troll them pretty hard with this armor. Its turret armor is fantastic frontally with 120 millimeters. So if you're able to get hull down in this tank, then really tier for tier this is a very strong turret to have on a tier 7 medium tank now one of the biggest choices that you're gonna have to make in this tank is what gun you're going to use there's an 88 75 millimeter and there's also a hundred and five millimeter I'm going to compare them for you and then you can be the judge of which one you want to use now let's talk about the rate of fire quickly we can see 7.5 9.83 and 15 Obviously you're going to have to hit the target a lot more with the 7.5 and you're going to have to hit the target a lot less often with the 10.5 centimeter gun, the 105 millimeter. Now, looking at the penetration values, I will say that the only reason why you would use the 105 is if you're going to fire it with premium ammunition. And the 105 with premium ammunition has 150 millimeters and the, with premium ammunition on the 88, 171 and 194 with the seven and a half. Now if you're using regular ammo and you don't want to use premium rounds then you don't want to be using the 105 on this tank. However, if you've got a lot of stockpile of the premium rounds like I do when I bought them when they were half price then you can afford to be using the premium rounds with the 105 on this tank to great effect as I will be showing you in this video. Now the difference between the seven and a half centimeter and the 88 in DPM is negligible. There's slightly more DPM on the 88 than there is on the 7.5 but you lose a little bit of accuracy and you lose a little bit of penetration unless you want to be using premium ammunition on the 88 so you're going to have to aim fairly carefully that's quite low penetration to have on a tier 7 medium but you can make it work as long as you you aim well if you want to use the seven and a half you get slightly more but you're going to have to hit the target more often and you will get a slight accuracy increase as well I think really it's just a feeling if you want to use the 88 or the 75, I don't know, it's up to you really guys which, which gun you use, they're both equally as good in my opinion in different situations. However, I like to use premium rounds with the 105. Why? Because you're going to be doing 27% more DPM than the 88, so that's a quarter, you're going to be doing over extra quarter of DPM. So the extra alpha damage comes in very handy. Hitting tanks for 350 damage is wonderful. And it's able to one-hit certain artilleries, for example, whereas the 88, you might have to hit the artillery twice. One downside is the pathetic accuracy of 0.55. But in the next few games, you're going to be able to see what you can do, even with the 105 at medium ranges. So here we go. We're playing the VK302DB, along with 105 millimeter. We're playing on steeps. And as you can see with the matchup, I'm against quite a few tier 8 heavy tanks. I wanted to show you that the 105 is quite capable of dealing with tanks above its tier with careful aim and careful choice of your decisions, which I think that you need to have in any medium tank. So there we can see a KB4 and a Pershing. I know I can pen that Pershing if I get lucky. So I decide to take a shot. We hit his lower front plate but it fails to go in unfortunately. 
remember that as I'm firing heat, it does not get armor normalization rolls, so it's quite a lot harder to not pen a flat surface. So I want to scout out, see what the Pershing is doing. He's run away. He's left this KV-4 by himself. And their KV-4 is one of their better players on their team. So, I tell the Type 59 to follow me. And I decide that it's time to do it. I'm going to go after this KV-4 man mode engaged. I try and angle my armor. I try and jink to try and make him miss. He doesn't miss his shot, and he takes out my tracks and my fuel. Our first shot doesn't go in. Trying to flank around him. He decides to shoot the type. I shoot the KV-4 in the side of the turret, which is not the best place to shoot the KV-4. If you've seen my KV-4 review, you'll know that the only real good place to shoot is in the back of the tank. And we set him on fire! We managed to hit the Pershing again as well. And again, we've already done over 1,500 damage this game. And we finish off the Pershing there. So, I did get a little lucky setting that KV-4 on fire, but I still think that we would have won that situation even if I hadn't. Basically, the 105 is perfectly capable of penning the KV-4s behind and the tank is so slow that we're able to get there consistently. So that was a rather low roll. I decide that I'm going to take another shot. We bounce unfortunately. And now I decide, oh this is a bad situation, let's use my repair pack and pull back. So we're against a fair few tanks who have come over after we killed two of their tier 8s at the start of the game. We can see that the gun depression is okay in this tank. It's not excellent, but it's not bad. I decide to get the clean kill on the T-34 first. And somebody finishes off the T-150 before I'm able to get another shot in. So we're up to three kills and 2,100 damage in this tier 8 game in our tier 7 medium tank. Alpha Derp on the AMX there. I don't want to expose myself to this Type 59. Equally I want to put some pressure out on him. Now this is where the 105 has its limits even with premium rounds. You can see I'm trying to use the third person to shoot over the ridge line here, which you can do. And the Type 59 manages to pen pen penetrate us in the turret. So I decide that I want to get a little bit more from this game because it's ending fairly quickly. And so I want to go and engage this IS-3 while not giving my flank to the Type 59. Oh! And there goes a lot of my health. So wow, this is looking like a pretty dodgy situation right here. I go forwards, I juke him and put one into his side. And now you can see he was trying to ram me to death. Unfortunately the IS-3 is very low profile and it's quite hard to get penetrating shots off. So I decide to reverse a little bit to get another shot into his side. He shoots me in the turret because he doesn't have very much gun depression. And we're able to get a cheeky shot into the rear of his tank and take him out. So I see the scumbag artillery and I want my top gun. Hope for luck. Hope for luck. Fly true. Horrible derp shells. Now here we can see what the 105 is like without premium ammunition. In a second you're going to see me load HE shells. There you go, I'm loading the HE shell now. And you be the judge of how much damage you do to the type if you don't fire premium ammunition. 17 on the side of a type with my non-premium rounds. 71, leaving him on 1%. Oh, it's so close! It's so close! And someone finishes him. We leave him on three health and they finish him just before we manage to pick him off. So, 
let's see what kind of stats we got for that game. So here we can see the after game report of that game that we just had on Steeps. Um, we managed to get 4,776 experience, which was not my mastery badge because I've had so many 4k games in this tank using the 105 really with my doubles. I think it is a, a very efficient way of grinding up this tank and you make a lot of credits even if you do fire premium ammunition with the 105 as long as you fire your shots carefully. So let's take a quick look at uh, my accuracy. We hit 17 out of 17 of our shells and 14 of those penetrated even though we were engaging tier 8 tanks for most of the battle which is why we got such a high experience ratio for the tank. We got our top gun we got the sniper medal and we got a Spartan for that quite fortunate bounce that we had on the turret of that IS-3. But that's one of the strengths of this tank, is that it's quite bouncy really for a tier 7 medium. Like, it's got a lot better armor than the Comet for example. It doesn't have the gun depression of the Comet or a lot of the other Comet strengths. But what this tank does have is sheer brutality and the fact that this tank can load a 105 is absolutely brutal. Considering I like to play this tank like a complete and utter bully. I like to play it like a brawler. And that's how I'm going to grind my way to the Indenpanzer. If I couldn't use the 105, I would probably personally use the 88. And I would fire quite a few premium rounds to make up for the low penetration on the 88. And if I couldn't use premium rounds at all, I would probably use the 75mm on this tank. And play it like a bit like a hybrid sniper that's also able to brawl if I needed to. So that's what I recommend that you guys do if you aren't in a position to be loading premium rounds on with a 105. So anyway guys, I think this tank is, is a lot of fun. Um, I personally won't be keeping it because it's not quite my game style. I feel like I'm herp derping a bit when I load a 105 with the, the premium on this tier 7. It's very powerful though. Um, I'd rather play a Comet personally, but still I fully recommend this tank and it is the best route to take if you want to get to the Indenpanzer because I don't recommend getting the Alf Panther, the, the tier 7 scout from what I've seen and people's reviews of it. It doesn't look like it's that strong but maybe some people can make it work, you know, some people will be able to make the, the tank work but I still think that going down the 302 DB is your best route on towards the monster that is the Leopard. So guys, you've been epic, thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll catch you later.